lamb stew with spring vegetables. So let me tell you where I'm up to. I cooked a quarter of a pound of bacon in this big pot, just until it was crisp, and then I put it aside. And now what I'm doing is I'm browning three pounds of lamb shoulder, and I'm browning it in two batches, just so it gets a nice sear and ends up steaming instead of searing. So this is what you want it to look like, nice and brown. It's not cooked through, just nice and brown. So the second batch is done. I'm gonna add lots of garlic, two tablespoons of minced garlic. I want this to have lots of flavor. Next, I need two cups of beef stock. You can use canned beef stock. Lots of liquid. You want the lamb to cook in liquid. One cup of good red wine. I'm using a Cote de Rhone. Okay. Cup of diced tomatoes. They're canned tomatoes with the juices. Just give it a big stir. And then lots of herbs. I've got minced thyme, fresh thyme, minced rosemary. That's gonna have a lot of flavor. Okay, then I'm gonna put the rest of the lamb and the bacon back in. And all the juices that collect. Okay, lots of salt and pepper. You want it to have a great flavor. Okay, give it all a big stir. Turn up the heat, bring it to a simmer. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna put in. First, I'm gonna put in potatoes. The next thing I put in is turnips, which have that kind of radishy flavor. And the next thing is carrots. You can either scrub them or peel them. I like to cut them in big chunks on a diagonal. And the last thing is pearl onions. Actually, these are fresh onions that I blanched in water just to take the peels off, but I mean, you could really use frozen onions. I love the sauce and the vegetables and the lamb. It's really as much about the vegetables as it is about the lamb and the wine. Okay, back into the oven for one hour and this is gonna be so good. I love recipes where the oven does all the work. Ta-da, oh, look how good that looks. Okay, just a few more things to do. First is I'm gonna make a beurre manier. So it's two tablespoons of butter, room temperature, two tablespoons of flour mixed together. I'm gonna to use it to thicken the sauce and just cook it a little bit on the cooktop. It just thickens the sauce and makes it really kind of rich and delicious. Okay, two more things. So I've got peas, and instead of shelling peas, I'm using frozen peas. So just give this a big stir. I'm going to just add some fresh parsley. Just stir it in. Perfect. Now all I need is a big bowl so I can taste it. Make sure it's really good. First, I need seafood stock to make the base of the stew. So the base starts with fennel and onions. I've got two cups of diced fennel, one and a half cups of diced onions. I've just cooked them in a little olive oil just until they're tender, about 10 minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna add three cloves of garlic, one teaspoon of whole fennel seeds. Really gives this an intense fennel flavor, just really good with seafood. Half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, give it a little heat. I'm just gonna cook this for two minutes just until the garlic's really fragrant. I'm gonna add 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes. It's crushed. Next thing I need is one and a half cups of white wine. And you know I always say, use a white wine you would drink. I'm using Pinot Grigio. But you'll have half a bottle of wine left to drink. Okay, now I need a tablespoon of salt. This is a big pot of seafood stew. One teaspoon of pepper. And next is four cups of seafood stock. Just pour it right in. It's a really rich stock. And this is gonna cook for 30 minutes. And while that happens, I'm gonna tell you how I made this gorgeous homemade seafood stock. It makes all the difference in the world. I put two tablespoons of olive oil in a pan and added shrimp shells from one pound of large shrimp, along with two cups of chopped yellow onions, two chopped carrots, three stalks of chopped celery, and mixed everything together and cooked them for 15 minutes. Then I added two cloves of minced garlic, gave it a stir, and I poured in one and a half quarts of water, added a half a cup of dry white wine, like Pinot Grigio, then added a third of a cup of tomato paste, 10 sprigs of fresh thyme, including the stems, one tablespoon of salt, and one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. Then I brought it all to a boil, lowered the heat, and simmered it for an hour. When the time was up, I strained the stock through a sieve, pressing the solids, poured it into a quart container, done. 
So I have one and a half pounds of cod. I might serve it with a salad to start and then the seafood stew. Okay, so that goes in right into the stew. And at this point, you don't want to stir it too much because you don't want to break up the fish. Next is one pound of shrimp. I actually buy it peeled and deveined. It's 16 to 20 count, which means there's 16 to 20 shrimp in a pound. They're pretty good size. Okay, next is one pound of scallops. I've got sea scallops, and what I did was I cut them in half crosswise, so they're not too big. You can use bay scallops, but don't cut them. They're really small. What I've done with the mussels is I've got about 24 mussels, and I soak them in water with a little bit of flour in it, and that gets any sand out of the mussels. And rinse them. I don't want any flour in the stew. Just check to make sure the mussels are closed. It says they're alive. And now I'm just gonna put it right on the top. So I sprinkle it over the top of the chipino. Don't stir it at this point. You don't want to break everything up. Put the lid on and cook it for 10 minutes. That's gonna be delicious. How gorgeous, I wish you could smell it, it's amazing. And all the mussels are open, so we're good to go. I'm gonna turn off the heat and add one more thing, a tablespoon of Pernod, which is like anise flavored liqueur. I'm gonna put the lid back on and let it sit for like two minutes, just so it really permeates all the seafood. Okay, I've got one more thing. I'm gonna serve it with garlic toast and I've got them in the oven. So I've baked slices of baguette, olive oil, salt and pepper, 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And now in order to make them garlic toast, I'm gonna to cut a piece of garlic in half and just rub the cut half right on the toast. And that way you don't have like a bite of garlic, you just have the flavor of it. And with the seafood, it's gonna be fantastic. Time to serve up the stew. How good does that look? Wow. A Little bit of parsley on the top of each one, a couple of toasts, and I would say that's a seafood stew. Can't make good chicken noodle soup without good homemade chicken stock. Fortunately, I had two quarts in the freezer. So I'm gonna heat that up. I'm gonna put in one cup of chopped carrots right into the chicken stock. One cup of chopped celery. And two cups of noodles. I just use regular egg noodles. You can probably use any kind of pasta, but this chicken noodle soup has to be egg noodles. Two cups, right in. Give it a big stir. This is gonna cook for about 10 minutes. And actually it's nice because the starch and the noodles is gonna get into the soup. Gives it a little body, which is great. And then I need to add chicken. And I just cook the chicken exactly the way I usually do. I take two chicken breasts, bone in, skin on, put them on a sheet pan, rub them with olive oil, sprinkle with lots of salt and pepper, and roast them at 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. I mean, that's it. So I'm just gonna take the skin off. And then with a knife, just cut around the bone. So all I really want is the meat. You can really just peel it off with your hands if you want to. And because you're gonna dice it or shred it, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. You just need large pieces of chicken. It's amazing how the olive oil and the skin and the seasoning really gets into the chicken and it keeps it absolutely delicious. So much more flavorful than boiling it, which I think takes all the flavor out of the chicken. And you can either shred it like this or you can dice it, but this time I feel like dicing it. So just nice big bite-sized pieces. Mm. This looks so wonderful. It's so moist this way. And that's what I want from Miguel's chicken noodle soup. You can use dark meat for this, but it's sort of more traditional to use white meat. Big dice, perfect. Okay, let's see how the soup is doing. It's just 10 minutes. It smells fantastic. Oh. How good does that look? Wow. Okay, chicken in, little parsley, and it's almost done. So if you've got chicken stock in the refrigerator or the freezer, this is really fast to do. Quarter cup of parsley. It's always good to have a fresh herb in there. Just really brings out the flavor. Makes the whole thing taste really fresh. You can do dill if you like dill, whatever you have around. Nothing too strong though, not rosemary. Into the pot. <laughs> this is a really good chicken noodle soup. 
So depending on how salty or peppery the stock is, I'm gonna add some more seasoning, but first I have to taste it. This is a tough job. Oh, it's so good. It's got so much chicken flavor. It needs a little more salt. The strange thing about chicken soup is it can taste like dirty dishwater or it can taste like really delicious chicken soup and salt is the only ingredient that's different. Shrimp bisque, I love it, but every recipe I've seen is really complicated. I decided I'm gonna see if I can make a really simple version that's just delicious. I bought fish stock and I've added the shrimp shells to it to give it even more flavor. I'm gonna strain the fish stock. I need three and three quarter cups. So if I have a little less, I'm just gonna add some water. Yep, just a little water. Okay, so first thing I've done here is sauteed two cups of leeks and three tablespoons of olive oil. Just make sure the leeks are really, really clean before you cook them. Okay, I'm gonna add some garlic. About a tablespoon of garlic. Just saute it for about a minute. I actually love shrimp bisque. I like that rich shrimp flavor and a little bit of sherry. So the next thing I need is a little bit of cayenne pepper. Just a pinch, not too much. You don't want it to overpower the shrimp. And just cook that together. Okay. And then a pound of shrimp. This is where the shells came from. And just cook the shrimp for about three minutes until they're just perfectly pink and just tender. When the shrimp's cooked, I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients and have a really rich, delicious shrimp bisque. Well, I can't make good shrimp bisque without sherry, but I've actually decided a little cognac would help it too. So I'm gonna start with a quarter of a cup of cognac. I'm just gonna pour it right into the shrimp and leeks. Let it cook for a minute. Mm, that smells good. And a quarter of a cup of dry sherry. And all that's just gonna really get into the shrimp and flavor the soup. Mmm, now that smells like shrimp bisque. Shrimp and sherry, so classic. Okay, I'm gonna puree this now. I'm gonna just put it right into the food processor. And now I'm just gonna puree it until it's really chunky. I don't like it when it's too smooth. Okay, that's perfect. So now I'm gonna make a white sauce that's gonna be the base of the soup. This white sauce is really the same kind of white sauce I made for the lasagna. I'm starting with half a stick of butter, then a quarter of a cup of flour. I'm gonna cook it over medium-low heat for about a minute, just to cook the flour. Then I'm adding two cups of half and half. I'm just gonna stir this until the half and half gets hot and it thickens with the flour. So far it's been pretty easy. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna put in is the pureed shrimp and leeks. Mm, really smells good. You can smell the cognac and the sherry. That's gonna have so much flavor. The fish stock, three and three quarter cups. Third of a cup of tomato paste. Two teaspoons of salt. And one teaspoon of pepper. And that's it. I'm just gonna stir it up and just let this simmer. All the flavors are gonna go together. It's gonna be rich and delicious, I hope. I'm starting with five ounces of each of three mushrooms, portobello, cremini, and shiitake. If you can't find all three, just pick one. Okay, nice clean mushrooms. So the next step is to separate the mushroom stems from the caps. That one's just caps. Take off the stems. I love the nutty sort of meaty flavor of the wild mushrooms. I'm gonna chop the stems. 
just a rough chop because it's all gonna get cooked together. And then for more flavor, I'm gonna chop a carrot. Any kind of vegetables you have that will flavor the stock, it's a great way to use them up. Okay, so now I'm gonna heat the pan. A tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of butter. In go the onions, carrots, and the mushroom stems. These are just gonna cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until they get really nicely caramelized. And Okay, big sprig of thyme, right in. Just gonna let that cook. I'm gonna get the rest of the soup ready. So the first thing I'm gonna use is a leek. I know you've seen it at the grocery store, but people don't use it so much here. So, I need some butter and oil again, just so that you get the best flavor of the butter and the best burning temperatures of the oil. Leeks go into the pan, and that's gonna saute for about 15 to 20 minutes until they have great flavor. In the meantime, I'm gonna pour some water into the stock. I need six cups of water. So it's just gonna simmer away for about 30 minutes until it gets a really rich mushroom stock. And then later, I'm gonna add it to the soup. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do for the soup is cut up the mushroom caps. Like quarter, half inch slices. Okay, that's it for the mushrooms. I'm just gonna go into the pan with the leeks and the butter. Just give them a stir. And those are gonna cook for about 10 minutes until all the moisture from the mushrooms gets out into the soup. Okay, now I'm gonna strain the stock. I wanna get every last bit. Okay, so the next thing is, I'm gonna add a little flour to these mushrooms. It's amazing how much they've cooked down. So I need a quarter of a cup of flour. What this is gonna do is thicken the soup. Just add it right to the mushrooms. Cook it for a minute. Perfect. Now I need a cup of dry white wine. Whatever you have in the refrigerator. Oh, that smells great. Okay, some fresh thyme leaves, about a teaspoon. Give it a stir. And now I'm gonna add the stock. Look how gorgeous that is, just from the stems. Okay, last ingredients. So one cup of cream. And then a cup of half and half. And half a cup of fresh parsley. Give it a stir. So I'm gonna chill this, and then I'm gonna heat it up just before dinner. This is fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, this is the best soup I've ever had. <laughs> it is delicious. Thank you. So I'm gonna start with onions. Got a little bit of butter. So it's eight tablespoons of butter. I think the base of any good soup is onions just sauteed really slowly so that they get really caramelized, and have lots of flavor. Okay, into the pot, that's about two cups of onions. And these are gonna saute for about 10 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get to work on the celery, carrots, and potatoes, all medium diced. Perfectly cooked onions, nice and translucent. Okay, I'm gonna put the rest of the vegetables in. I have two cups of medium diced celery, two cups of medium diced carrots, and four cups of potatoes. And I'm just gonna stir them around. I'm gonna saute them for about 10 minutes so they start to cook. Oh, this smells great. Okay, now some fresh thyme. About one and a half teaspoons of fresh thyme. You can use dried herbs, but fresh herbs are so much better. And if you have any left over, you can just strip them off the stems and just freeze them and use them another time. Okay. One teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of pepper. It's really important to season things as you go along. 
just stir it up. I'm gonna let this cook for about 10 minutes until the vegetables start to get tender. Just can't let clam chowder without clams and fresh clam juice. Well, you could probably use bottled clam juice, but it just won't be the same. I'm gonna use a quart of fresh clam juice. Just pour it right into the vegetables. Just gonna bring that to a boil. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is make a roux, which is a little thickener. So it's eight tablespoons of butter. Just gonna let that melt. Half a cup of flour. And what it's gonna do is enrich and thicken the soup. Okay, the butter's melted. Just dump the flour in all at once, and then just whisk it. I'm gonna cook it for just about two or three minutes. Soup is actually great to make for parties because you always make it in advance, and the clam chowder actually tastes better after a day or two. Okay. I'm just gonna take about a cup of the hot soup and just put it right into the roux. And then put it all back into the soup. And that just makes sure you don't get any lumps, ever. And then just stir it and it'll thicken the soup right away. Mm. This looks great. Okay, it's time for the clams. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna remove the sort of black part of the clam so I get the good meaty part into the soup. The rest is a little chewier, it's not so flavorful. This is about one and a half pounds of clams. Probably serves about six to eight people. I have the clams at the end because you don't want them to get tough. You don't want them to overcook at all. Okay, now into the pot of clam chowder, and I'm just gonna cook them for about two minutes, just enough to heat them up. I'm just gonna stir them in. Messy job. So I need about two cups of milk. Oh, this looks great. Seriously delicious East Hampton clam chowder. Let me just check for seasoning. Always a good idea. That's perfect. You can really taste the fresh clams. Makes a difference. Okay, two tablespoons of olive oil and a cup of onions, about one yellow onion. I always put the onions in first because they don't burn as easily as the garlic. Just mince the garlic finely. You know, there's no real secret to mincing. The only thing you want to do is hold the tip down with one finger and then move the handle up and down. Otherwise, the knife jumps all over the board and it's hard to control. Okay. Garlic's ready. Okay, now some flavors. Definitely need salt and pepper. One and a half teaspoons of salt. I use kosher salt. One teaspoon of pepper. And half a teaspoon of dried oregano. Oh, can't get that. And just stir that around. Let that cook with the onions. wonder how TR is getting along with his assignment. Sounds like a secret mission. Mm, I think the onions and garlic are done. Hope TR likes this soup. It's nice to have something that's actually delicious and good for you. I'm gonna add two cups of carrots, chopped. I like big chunks. You want this to be really good, hearty, chunky soup. Okay. And a cup of diced potatoes. The nice thing about the potatoes is you don't have to peel them. You don't have to bother. <laughs> peel tastes just fine. It's going to cook for a long time. And who wants to peel anything that small anyway? <laughs> okay, right into the pot. Eight cups of good chicken stock. This is homemade. If you can make it homemade, it's really worth it. But if not, you can find a good chicken stock in the grocery store. Okay. And now we're going to put in split peas. So. I'm going to use about a pound of split peas, which is about two cups of split peas total. But I'm going to only put in about one and a half cups to start with, so it makes a really thick soup. And then I put the rest in, right at, about halfway through the cooking, so you get really chunky, just the bite of split peas also. 
So I'm just gonna let this simmer for about 40 minutes. Mm, this is gonna be a really nice soup to come home to. So split pea soup is half done, looking pretty good. So at this point, halfway through the cooking, I'm gonna add another half a cup of split peas. And what that does is, then the split peas that are already in there get really soft and make the soup really rich and thick. And then these split peas will cook a little less, so they'll have a little bit of a bite to them, which is really good. I like both textures. Continue to let the soup simmer and just cook it for another 40 minutes. It's gonna be rich and delicious and so good for you.